Today we'll study sequences. A sequence of real numbers is a function defined on set n which is set of natural numbers and whose range is contained in the set of real numbers. So any sequence it is defined by this function f from natural numbers to real numbers. Now you must have studied not many sequences say for example arithmetic progression is a sequence so if we write numbers such as 1, 3, 5, 7 it is an example of a sequence. You might also have heard about this famous Fibonacci sequence, which is 1, 1, and then 1 plus 1, 2, 1 plus 2, 3, 2 plus 3, 5. That is, any term is defined by sum of two previous terms. So this is your Fibonacci sequence. Then there could be some sequences which do not have any mathematical formulation. Say, for example, sequence of prime numbers. For sequence of prime numbers, we do not have any formula as yet. Now there are many ways to define a sequence and the most common way is either using angled brackets and writing its nth term or using small brackets. Now we have to write any sequence say for example sequence of reciprocals of even number then we can write the sequence as this x and then writing some terms which is 1 by 2 1 by 4, 1 by 6, 1 by 8 and it goes on and the other way to express this sequence is writing it as 1 upon 2n where n belongs to natural numbers. In this first case we have defined sequence as ordered arrangement of numbers and the second case we have defined this in terms of its nth term. Another way to define sequence is using recursive relations. Say for example let us say, suppose x1 is 1 and xn plus 1 is xn plus 2. Now, if we write x2, x2 is 1 plus 2, it will be 3. x3 is 3 plus 2, 5. So, this sequence is actually sequence of odd natural numbers. So, we have defined the sequence of odd natural numbers using a recursive relation which is xn plus 1 equals xn plus 2 where x1 is 1. Now, this Fibonacci sequence, it can be expressed as an plus 1 equals an plus a n minus 1. So, we may express any sequence by writing ordered terms. We may define a sequence by writing its nth term or we may define any sequence with recursive formula. And then as discussed previously, there could be some sequences which do not have any mathematical formulations. Now once we have defined a sequence, the next thing that we will study is convergence of a sequence. A sequence of real numbers converges to a real number A if for every positive number epsilon there exists an n belongs to natural numbers such that for all n greater than or equal to n mod of a n minus a is less than epsilon. So if we can find any n greater than or equal to n for all the values of epsilon however small it may be then we call such a as this limit of sequence and we write limit n tends to infinite a n is equal to a. So this is the formal definition to check convergence of a sequence. So let us take up an example. Now here the question is show that the sequence fn defined by fn equals under root of n plus 1 minus under root n is convergent. Now one of the limitation of this standard method of checking convergence is we must know this a in order to check convergence using this epsilon method. Now it is not given in the question but we know that this function fn it converges to 0. If we take this limit, limit n tends to infinite under root of n plus 1 minus under root n then it is infinity minus infinity form and if we multiply it with its conjugate we will get this as 1 upon under root of n plus 1 plus under root of n which is 1 by infinite and the value of this limit is 0. So this sequence it converges to this number a which is 0 and this 0 is the limit of this sequence. 
Now, once we know the value of A, we can use this method to show that the sequence is a convergent sequence. Now we can write mod of fn minus zero. Now mod of fn minus zero will be mod of under root of n plus one minus under root of n. Now what we'll do is we'll rationalize it. We can write this as one upon under root n plus one plus under root n. Now we know that under root of n plus one plus under root n, it is greater than two times root n. Then we can write one upon under root n plus one plus under root n will be less than one upon two root n. So this expression, it is less than one upon two root n and it is less than epsilon. Now from this we can write under root n, it is greater than one upon two epsilon or n is greater than 1 upon 4 epsilon square which satisfies our condition that for all the natural numbers which are greater than 1 upon 4 epsilon square this fn minus 0 it is less than epsilon however smaller the value of epsilon may be. This is how we show a sequence is convergent using standard definition. Now a sequence it may be a convergent sequence and if a sequence does not converge, then we say the sequence is a divergent sequence. So any sequence which does not have a limit or does not converge is said to be divergent. Now what are the conditions that a sequence is divergent? If a sequence it diverges to plus infinite or minus infinite or more than one limit points or it have oxidating values then the sequence is said to be a divergent sequence. Now there are some theorems on divergence and the first one is if the sequence is fn and phi n they diverge to infinity then both fn plus phi n and fn into phi n diverge to infinity as well. Second theorem is if fn diverges to infinity and phi n is bounded then fn plus phi n it also diverges to infinity. Now third theorem is if fn diverges to infinity and phi n is a convergent sequence then fn plus phi n it also diverges to infinity. And the fourth theorem is if we have two sequences fn and phi n such that fn is greater than or equal to phi n and phi n diverges to infinity then this sequence fn it also diverges to infinity. And in the same way if fn is less than phi n and if phi n diverges to minus infinity, then fn also diverges to minus infinity. Let us take up an example. Say for example, let x1 be 1 and xn plus 1 be xn plus 1 upon xn square. Now the first part is show that xn plus 1 cube is greater than xn cube plus 3. Now what we'll do is, we'll take cube both sides. We can write xn plus 1 cube and it'll be equal to xn plus 1 upon xn square whole cube. Now it will be xn cube plus 1 upon xn to the power 6 plus 3 1 upon xn cube and plus 3. Now since x1 is equal to 1 and xn plus 1 is given by this recursive relation we can say any xn is greater than 0 and if xn is greater than 0 then xn cube plus 1 upon xn to the power 6 plus 3 upon xn cube plus 3 will always be greater than xn cube plus 3. So that's our first part of the result which is xn plus 1 cube it is greater than xn cube plus 3. Now we'll come to this second part and the second part is we need to prove that xn is greater than or equal to cube root of 3n minus 2. Now for the second part, we need to prove that xn is greater than or equal to cube root of 3n minus 2. Now we'll prove this result using mathematical induction. So we'll prove this result when n is 1. So we can write x1, it is greater than or equal to cube root of 3n minus 2. And here the value of n is 1, so it will be greater than or equal to 1. And the question it says x1 equals to 1 that means p1 is true. Now we let 
P K be true. Now if P K is true, then we can write X K and A B greater than or equal to cube root of 3 K minus 2. Now we have to prove this result for P K plus 1. Now for P K plus 1, we need to write X K plus 1. Now we know that X K plus 1 Q, it will be greater than x k cube plus 3 and this x k it is greater than or equal to this 3 k minus 2 so we can write this as 3 k minus 2 plus 3 so from here we can write x k plus 1 it will be greater than or equal to 3 k plus 1 minus 2 whole cube root that means p k plus 1 is true so from induction we can say that xn will always be greater than or equal to cube root of 3n minus 2. Now this third part is show that xn diverges. Now in part b we have already shown that xn is greater than or equal to cube root of 3n minus 2. Now if we take this limit n tends to infinite cube root of 3n minus 2 we know that this limit it diverges to plus infinite and since xn is greater than fn and fn it diverges from here we can say that this xn also diverges to infinity using theorems on divergence so from here we can say that the sequence xn diverges let fn and gn be two sequences such that fn plus gn and fn into gn converge show by an example that the sequence fn and gn may fail to convert. Now let us take an example where fn is minus 1 to the power n and gn is minus 1 to the power n plus 1. Now we look at fn plus gn. fn plus gn in this case it will be simply 0 and this constant sequence it always converges to 0. Whereas both fn and gn they have oscillating values at infinity plus 1 and minus 1 and both these sequences they do not converge. So it is an example in which fn plus gn it converges but fn and gn they both fail to converge now considering the same example if we take fn into gn fn into gn will be minus 1 to the power 2n plus 1 and which is simply minus 1 now again it is a constant sequence now this constant sequence again it converges to minus 1 whereas both fn and gn they fail to converge so this is one such example. Now let us look at two very important sequences. Now the first one is bounded sequence. A sequence is said to be bounded above if there exists a natural number n such that a n is less than or equal to n for every n greater than or equal to 1. That is all the terms of the sequence they are always less than or equal to some number n. In the same way we can say a sequence is bounded below if all the terms in the sequence they are greater than or equal to some number m for all n greater than or equal to 1 and we say that a sequence is bounded if it is both bounded above as well as bounded below that is all the terms of the sequence they are greater than or equal to some number m but less than or equal to some number n then we say the sequence is bounded and one of the important properties of convergent sequences, every convergent sequence is bounded. So if there is a convergent sequence, then that sequence has to be a bounded sequence. Now let us take monotonic sequences. Now when we say a sequence is monotonic, we simply mean that either it is an increasing sequence or it is a decreasing sequence. So we say any sequence xn, which is a sequence of real numbers, is increasing if x1 is less than equal to x2 is less than equal to xn is less than equal to 
x n plus one. So this sequence we say it is an increasing sequence in the same way. If x one is greater than or equal to x two and x n is greater than or equal to x n plus one, we say that the sequence is decreasing. A sequence is said to be monotone if it is either increasing or decreasing. So if we have to prove any sequence is a monotone, we need to prove that either it is increasing or it is decreasing. Now let us take up a question. It says using induction prove that the sequence a1 equals 1 and a n plus 1 equals 3 minus 1 upon a n is an increasing sequence. Now we are given that a n plus 1 is 3 minus 1 upon a n. Now we can find a2 and a2 will be 3 minus 1 upon a1 and the value of a1 is 1 so a2 is 2. Now our statement is the sequence is increasing that means a n plus 1 is greater than or equal to a n. Now we'll prove the statement for n equals 1. Now the value of n is 1 then we can write a2 is Greater than or equal to a one. Now a two is two and a one is one. So this statement one is correct. Now let us assume that let p k be true. If p k is true, then we can write a k plus one will be greater than or equal to a k. Now one upon a k plus one will be less than or equal to one upon a k. Now we multiply it with minus one. We can write one upon a k plus one will be greater than or equal to minus one upon a k, and then we'll add three both sides. Now this is nothing but this is a k plus two. So from here we can say a k plus two is greater than or equal to a k plus one. That means p k plus one is true. So from mathematical induction we can say that. A n plus one will always be greater than or equal to A n for all n belongs to n. That is, the sequence is an increasing sequence. Now let us take another question. It says, is the sequence two to the power n upon factorial n is a monotonic, non-increasing or non-decreasing sequence? And find the bounds of the sequence. Now for this question, A n is given by Two to the power n upon factorial n. Now we write a n plus one upon a n. Now a n plus one will be two to the power of n plus one upon factorial n plus one, and then divide by a n, which is two to the power n upon factorial n. Now here two to the power n will cancel. Now factorial n will also cancel, so we'll get this as two upon n plus one. That is a n plus one upon a n. And it is equal to two upon n plus one. Now n plus one is always greater than or equal to two. That means two upon n plus one. It is always less than or equal to one. So from here we can say that a n plus one is less than or equal to a n. That means the sequence is decreasing sequence or monotonic non-increasing sequence. Now we have to find bounds of this sequence. Now we know that. A n is defined as two to the power n upon factorial n, and it is always greater than zero. Now we need to find its upper bound. Now we know that factorial n it is always greater than or equal to two to the power of n minus one. So in general, factorial n is always greater than or equal to two to the power of n minus one. So one upon factorial n will be less than one upon Two to the power of n minus one. So we can write this a n will be less than or equal to two to the power n upon two to the power of n minus one. That is, the sequence is always less than or equal to two. So from here we can say the sequence is a bounded sequence. Now here the question is: State whether x n, which is given by n plus one upon n, is monotonic, increasing or decreasing. Now we can write. X n plus one minus X n is n plus two upon n plus one minus n plus one upon n. It'll be n square plus two n minus n square minus two n minus one upon n into 
n plus 1. Now here n square and 2n will cancel. So we'll get xn plus 1 minus xn and it'll be equal to minus 1 upon n into n plus 1 which is less than 0. So from here we can say xn plus 1 is always less than xn. That means the sequence is monotonic decreasing. Now another method to show the sequence is decreasing is by considering this function fx equals 1 plus 1 by x. Now if we find f dash x, f dash x will be minus 1 upon x square. That means f dash x is less than 0. And if f dash x is less than 0, then fx is strictly decreasing. So this function fx, it is strictly decreasing function. So if we plot the graph of this function, this function will be strictly decreasing when x is greater than 0. Now, if we look at the sequence xn, which is n plus 1 by n, it is nothing but 1 plus 1 by n. That is, it is the same function only defined for natural numbers. So if we consider the value of this function at natural numbers, then this function, it is strictly decreasing for natural numbers also. So this xn, it is monotonic decreasing. And this leads to our most important theorem and that is monotone convergence theorem. And the theorem says any monotonic sequence of real numbers is convergent if and only if it is bounded. So if we can show that any sequence which is monotone and bounded sequence is a convergent sequence. So while discussing convergence of a sequence, what we'll do is we'll prove that a sequence is monotonic and the sequence is bounded. Now let us take up an example. Say for example, we are given that let a1 equals root 2 and a n plus 1 is under root a n plus 2 for n greater than equal to 1. Now the first question is prove that a n is less than 2 for all n belongs to n. Now we'll prove this first part using induction. So our assertion is p n which is a n is less than 2. Now we'll prove this result for p1. Now we take n is 1 we'll get a1 and the value of a1 is root 2 and root 2 is less than 2 that means statement 1 is correct. Now we'll let pk be true that means ak is less than 2. Now using pk we have to prove that pk plus 1 is also true. Now we are given that ak is less than 2 if we add 2 both sides we can write ak plus 2 will be less than 4 that is under root of ak plus 2 will be less than 2. Now under root of ak plus 2 will be nothing but ak plus 1. So from here we can say ak plus 1 will be less than 2 that means pk plus 1 is true. And if pk plus 1 is true from induction we can say that it is a bounded sequence. Now second part is we need to prove that this an it is an increasing sequence. Now we are given that a1 is root 2 and a n plus 1 is under root of a n plus 2. We have to prove that the sequence is an increasing sequence that is a n it is less than or equal to a n plus 1. Now for this part also we will use induction. So this is our assertion and first we will prove it for n equals 1. For n equals 1, we'll get a1 is less than or equal to a2. Now a1 is root 2 and a2 is under root of 2 plus root 2. Now under root of 2 plus root 2, it is greater than root 2. So from here we can say a2 is greater than a1. That is, that is this assertion is true for n equals 1. Now we we'll let that let pk be true. Now if pk is true then ak it will be less than or equal to a k plus 1. Now what we'll do is we'll add to both sides. We'll write 2 plus ak it will be less than or equal to 2 plus ak plus 1 and if we take under root sign also then under root of ak plus 2 will be less than or equal to under root of 2 plus ak plus 1. Now this is nothing but this is 
ए के प्लस वन एंड इल बी लेस देन और इक्वल टू ए के प्लस टू दैट मीन्स एसेशन पी के प्लस वन इज ट्रू सो फ्रॉम इंडक्शन वी कैन से दैट दिस सीक्वेंस इज एन इंक्रीजिंग सीक्वेंस सो नाउ वी हैव दिस रिजल्ट दैट दिस सीक्वेंस इट इज बाउंडेड एज वेल एज इट इज मोनोटोनेट सो फ्रॉम मोनोटोन कन्वर्जेंट सीक्वेंस वी कैन से दैट इट इज अ कन्वर्जेंट सीक्वेंस Now we need to find limit of the sequence. Now since we know that the sequence is a convergent sequence, then this limit n tends to infinite a n l be equal to this limit n tends to infinite a n plus one, and this is say l. Now in this recurring relation, what we'll do is we'll take limit n tends to infinite both sides. So if we take n tends to infinite both sides, we can write. L equals under root of L plus two. That is L square minus L minus two equals zero. Now from here we can say either the value of L is two or the value of L is minus one. But L cannot take the value minus one because a one is root two and the sequence is increasing. So the limiting point it must have a value which is greater than root two. That means in this case the value of limit point will be two. So we can say that. This limit n tends to infinite a n, its value will be simply two. Now here the question is: Let y be defined inductively by y one equals one and y n plus one equals one by four two y n plus three for all n greater than or equal to one. Now we need to show that the sequence is converging and it converges to Three by two. Now y one is one. We can write y two. Y two will be one by four. Two plus three. Five by four. Now in the first part we'll prove that the sequence is monotonic, increasing sequence. That is, y n is less than or equal to y n plus one. So this is our assertion. Now we'll prove this result for n equals one. So for n equals one, we we'll get y one is less than or equal to y two. Now y one is one and y two is five by four. So clearly one is less than five by four. That means p one is true. Now we we'll let p k be true. So if p k is true, then we can write y k. It is less than or equal to y k plus one. Now we multiply it with two. And then add three, we can add two y k plus three. It'll be less than two y k plus one plus three, and we'll divide everything with four. So we we'll get one by four of this first expression less than equal to one by four of this second expression. Now this is nothing but this is y k plus one. So we can add y k plus one. It'll be less than or equal to y k plus two. That means assertion p k plus 1 is true so from mathematical induction we can say that this sequence it is monotonic increasing sequence now the second part we'll prove that the sequence is a bounded sequence so y1 equals 1 and y n plus 1 equals 1 by 4 2 y n plus 3 Now for the second part also, we'll make the assertion that y n it is less than two for all n belongs to n. So that's a assertion p n. Now we'll prove it for n equals one. Now for n equals one, we'll get y one and y one is one and y one is less than two. That means p one is true. Now we'll let P K B true. That means y n is less than two. What we'll do is we'll multiply it with two and then add three. So we'll get two y n plus three. It is less than two into two four. Four plus three is seven, and we multiply it with one by four. So we'll get y n plus one. It is less than Seven by four, which is less than two. So that means 
p k plus 1 is also true so from mathematical induction we can say that this sequence it is a bounded sequence where each and every term is bounded between 0 and 2 now we need to find limit point of the sequence now for limit point of the sequence we'll take limit n tends to infinite now we know that the sequence is both monotonic and bounded so this sequence it must be a convergent sequence and suppose it converges to some limit l so this limit y n plus 1 will be l and then limit n tends to infinite y n will also be l so we can get l equals 1 by 4 2l plus 3 so it will be 2l equals 3 or the value of l is 3 by 2 so this sequence it will converge to 3 by 2 that is the value of this limit n tends to infinite y n will be 3 by 2. Now here the question is show that the sequence under root 2 under root 2 root 2 under root 2 root 2 root 2 converges and find its limit. Now for this question a1 is 2 to the power 1 by 2 a2 is 2 to the power 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 a3 is 2 to the power 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8 that is a n is 2 to the power 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 square up to 1 by 2 to the power of n. Now this power is nothing but a gp so we can write 2 to the power 1 by 2 1 minus 1 upon 2 to the power n upon 1 minus 1 by 2 this 1 by 2 will cancel so we'll get this as 2 to the power 1 minus 1 upon 2 to the power n and it'll always be less than 2 so we can write this a n it is greater than 0 but less than 2 that is the sequence is a bounded sequence now we'll prove that the sequence is a monotonic sequence now we know that 2 to the power n it is less than 2 to the power of n plus 1 minus 1 upon 2 to the power n it will be less than minus 1 upon 2 to the power of n plus 1 and we can write 2 to the power of 1 minus 1 upon 2 to the power n it will be less than 2 to the power 1 minus 1 upon 2 to the power of n plus 1 that means a n will be less than a n plus 1 that is the sequence is monotonic increasing sequence now since the sequence is bounded and monotonic then from monotone convergence theorem we can say that the sequence converges and we need to find its limit now we'll take this limit n tends to infinite if we take this limit n tends to infinite it will be an infinite gp then this value will be 2 to the power a upon 1 minus r and there will be simply 2 so this sequence it converges to 2 so its limit will be simply 2 now another method to solve the same question is using a recursive relation now here a1 is root 2 and a n plus 1 is root 2 into a n now in the first part we will prove that this sequence is a bounded sequence and our assertion is a n is less than 2 so that's your pn now we'll prove the result for n equals 1 so we'll write a1 and a1 is root 2 and root 2 is less than 2 that means it is true for n equals 1 now we'll let pk be true it means that ak it will be less than 2 now we'll multiply ak with 2 so we'll write 2 ak will be less than 4 then under root of 2 ak it will be less than 2 and root 2 ak it is nothing but ak plus 1 so from here we can say ak plus 1 is less than 2 that means p k plus 1 is true so from induction we can say that this an is less than 2 or this an is greater than 0 but less than 2 that is the sequence is a bounded sequence now for the second part we will prove that the sequence is monotone increasing sequence that is 
a n it will be less than a n plus 1. So that's your assertion p n. We'll prove this assertion for n equals 1. So for n equals 1 we'll get a 1 and a 1 is root 2 which is less than under root of 2 root 2 which is a 2 that is a 1 is less than a 2 that means it is true for n equals 1. Now for the second part we let let p k be true. So if p k is true then a k will be less than a k plus 1. Now we will multiply it with 2 and we will take under root sign. So we write under root 2 a k will be less than under root 2 a k plus 1. Now this is nothing but a k plus 1 and this is a k plus 2. So from here we can say p k plus 1 is true. So from mathematical induction we can say that a n will be less than a n plus 1 and that the sequence is monotonic increasing sequence. Now since we have proved that the sequence is bounded and monotonic then from monotone convergence theorem we can say that this sequence is a convergent sequence. Now we need to find its limit. So using this recursive relation we will take limit n to n to infinite and if the sequence converges to some limit l we can write l equals under root 2L that is the value of L is simply 2. So the sequence it converges to 2. So that's our second method of solving this question. Now here the question is An is a sequence of real numbers satisfying An plus 1 equals 3An upon 2 plus An. We need to prove that if A1 lies between 0 and 1 then the sequence is increasing and if A1 is greater than 1 then the sequence is decreasing and hence we have to prove that this limit n tends to infinite a n is equal to 1. Now what we are given is we are given that a n plus 1 is equal to 3 a n upon 2 plus a n. Now since each of the case a 1 is greater than 0 we can say that any a n plus 1 it will be greater than 0. Now we can rearrange this as 1 upon a n plus 1 will be equal to 2 plus a n upon 3 a n and we can also write this as 1 upon a n plus 1 will be equal to 1 upon 3 plus 2 upon 3 a n. Now what we will do is we will subtract 1 both sides we can write this as 1 upon a n plus 1 minus 1 it will be equal to 2 by 3 1 upon a n minus 1. So we have this relation which is a n plus 1 minus 1 and it will be equal to 2 by 3 1 upon a n minus 1. Now using this Reagan relation we can prove that 1 upon a n plus 1 minus 1 it will be equal to 2 by 3 to the power n 1 upon a1 minus 1. Now we will take this first case when a1 lies between 0 and 1. Now if a1 lies between 0 and 1 then 1 upon a1 will be greater than 1. 1 upon a1 minus 1 will be greater than 0. If 1 upon a1 minus 1 is greater than 0 then from here we can say 1 upon a n plus 1 minus 1 will also be greater than 0. So this expression will be positive and this expression also will be positive. So we will start with this one. We are given that 1 upon a n plus 1 minus 1 and it is equal to 2 by 3 1 upon a n minus 1. Now it will be less than 1 upon a n minus 1. Now if we compare these two, we will get 1 upon a n plus 1 will be less than 1 upon a n. And since each term in the sequence is positive, we can say that a n plus 1 will be greater than a n. That is, the sequence a n is increasing. So we have proved that this sequence is a 
increasing sequence. Now for the second part, if we take a1 greater than 1, so if we take a1 greater than 1, 1 upon a1 will be less than 1, that means 1 upon a1 minus 1 will be less than 0. And if 1 upon a1 minus 1 is less than 0, then 1 upon a n plus 1 minus 1 will also be less than 0. Now for this case, both these expressions, they will be negative. So we are given that 1 upon a n plus 1 minus 1 will be equal to 2 by 3, 1 upon a n minus 1 and it will be greater than 1 upon a n minus 1. Now again comparing these two, we will get 1 upon a n plus 1 it will be greater than 1 upon a n that is a n plus 1 it will be less than a n that is when a 1 is greater than 1 then the sequence is a decreasing sequence. So in the first case when a 1 lies between 0 and 1 the sequence is increasing and when a 1 is greater than 1 the sequence is a decreasing sequence. We can also write that this a n plus 1 is 3 a n now we will add 6 and subtract 6 upon 2 plus a n then this a n plus 1 will be 3 minus 6 upon 2 plus a n now this value will be always less than 3 so a n plus 1 will be greater than 0 but less than 3 that means terms of the sequence they are bounded so the sequence is monotonic as well as bounded then using monotone convergence theorem we can say that it must converge to some limit L. Now in both the cases we need to prove that limit of the sequence is 1. Using recurring relation we can write 1 upon a n minus 1 will be equal to 2 by 3 to the power n minus 1 1 upon a 1 minus 1. Now if we take this limit n tends to infinite this limit will be 0 so we can write limit n tends to infinite 1 upon a n it is equal to 1 so from here we can say this limit n tends to infinite a n will be simply 1. Now here the question is if a n b there are positive numbers such that a is less than b and the sequence a n be recursively defined as a n plus 1 equals a n square plus a b upon a plus b where a 1 equals c and it is greater than 0. Now the first part is if c lies between a and b then by induction show that a n it will lie between a and b for all values of n. Now we have to prove this statement using induction. So our assertion is any term in the sequence a n it will lie between a and b. Now we have to prove this statement for n equals 1. Now we take n equals 1 we will get a1 greater than equal to a but less than equal to b and the question it says this a1 is c and c lies between a and b that means p1 is true. Now we will let pk be true. So we can write a k will lie between a and b. Now we square it we will write a square will be less than or equal to a k square and will be less than or equal to b square. Now we will add a b. So we will write a square plus a b will be less than a k square plus a b plus b square plus a b and now we will divide everything with a plus b. Now we divide everything with a plus b we will get a is less than a k square plus a b upon a plus b and will be less than or equal to b that is this a k plus 1 will also lie between a and b that is p k plus 1 is true. So p1 is true and assuming pk to be true we have proved that pk plus 1 is true. So from induction we can say that any term of the sequence will lie between a and b 
that is the sequence is a bounded sequence now for the second part we have to prove that the sequence is a decreasing sequence now for the second part what we'll do is we'll write a k plus 1 minus a k now a k plus 1 is a k square plus a b upon a plus b minus a k so it'll be a k square minus a plus b a k and then plus a b upon a plus b now we can factorize this as a k minus a into a k minus b upon a plus b now we know that a k it lies between a and b that means this value will be positive and a k minus b will be negative so this expression is less than or equal to zero so from here we can conclude that a k plus one minus a k will be less than equal to zero that is a k plus one is less than or equal to a k that is the sequence a n is a decreasing sequence now since we have proved that the sequence is bounded and it is monotone decreasing we know that the sequence converges now we have to find its limit point so what we'll do is we'll take this limit n tends to infinite so let the limit point of the sequence be l so this is l equals and then this limit n tends to infinite a n will also be l so it'll be l square plus a b upon a plus b we'll get l square minus a plus b l plus a b equals zero so the value of l is either a or the value of l is b now we are given that a one is c and this c it lies between a and b and the sequence is decreasing that means this limit point it should be less than b so limit point of the sequence will be simply a that means this limit n tends to infinite a n limit point of the sequence is nothing but a now for the second part if c is greater than b that is if a1 is greater than b then a2 will be a1 square plus ab upon a plus b will also be greater than b so from induction we can prove that any an will be greater than b now in this case if we write an plus 1 minus a n will be simply a n minus a into a n minus b upon a plus b now since a n is greater than b this is positive and this is positive so it will be greater than zero so from here we can say a n plus one it will be greater than a n now in this case this sequence will be an increasing sequence so this sequence a1 a2 a3 will increase and this a1 is greater than b now let us suppose that the sequence it converges to some limit l then again using the same fundamental we can write l square plus ab upon a plus b equals l that is the limit point of the sequence will be either a or b but in this case a1 is greater than b and the sequence is an increasing sequence so its limit point it must be greater than b so this limit point cannot be a and this limit point it cannot be b so from here we can say that in this case when c is greater than b this sequence it does not converge by contradiction now here the question is if a and x not are positive real numbers and x k be defined as follows x k equals 1 by 2 x k minus 1 plus a upon x k minus 1 then prove that x k is monotone decreasing and bounded and then calculate the limit now x not it is given that x not is greater than 0 then x1 will also be greater than 0 so any term in the sequence say x k it will be greater than 0 now if we write this x k as x k minus 1 plus a upon x k minus 1 by 2 then we know that arithmetic mean is always greater than or equal to its geometric mean and its geometric mean will be under root of x k minus 1 a upon x k minus 1 so this x k minus 1 will cancel so from here we can say this x k it will be 
greater than or equal to under root a. That means the sequence is bounded below. Now we'll find xk minus xk minus 1 will be xk minus 1 plus a upon xk minus 1 divided by 2 minus xk minus 1. So we can write this as a minus xk minus 1 whole square upon 2xk minus 1. Now xk minus 1 will be greater than or equal to under root a. So this a minus xk minus 1 square, it should be less than or equal to 0. So from here we can say this xk, it should be less than xk minus 1. That is the sequence is monotone decreasing sequence. Now the sequence is bounded below and it is a decreasing sequence. That means the sequence it converges. So if it converges, now let us say it converges to limit L. So if we take this limit k tends to infinite, then we can write L equals 1 by 2 L plus A by L. That is L square equals A or the value of L is plus or minus under root A. Now the sequence, it contains positive terms. So the limit point of the sequence will be under root A. So this limit k tends to infinite a k will be simply under root a. Now here the question is show that the sequence a n defined by a n plus 1 equals 1 by 2 a n plus 9 upon a n where n is greater than equal to 1 and a 1 is greater than 0 it converges to 3. Now we are given that a n plus 1 equals 1 by 2 a n plus 9 upon a n. Now n term of the sequence it is a positive number. Now if we write a n plus 1 as a n plus 9 upon a n by 2 then arithmetic mean it is always greater than or equal to its geometric mean which is 3. So this a n plus 1 it will be greater than or equal to 3. Now if we write an plus 1 minus an it will be simply 9 upon an minus an by 2 it will be 9 minus an square upon 2 an. Now since an is greater than or equal to 3, 9 minus an square is always less than or equal to 0. That means an plus 1 it will be less than or equal to an that is the sequence is monotone decreasing sequence. Now since the sequence is bounded below and it is monotone decreasing, it is a convergent sequence. Now we need to find limit of the sequence and let the limit point be L. We can write L equals 1 by 2 L plus 9 by L. So from here we get the value of L is simply 3. Simply 3 because we have to take positive value of this limit point. So this limit it converges to 3 and that is the answer to this question. Now the next question is show that the sequence Sn which is 1 plus 1 by n to the power n is convergent and then we need to prove that this limit it lies between 2 and 3. Now using binomial expansion we can write Sn is 1 plus n into 1 by n, n, n minus 1 upon factorial 2, 1 upon n square, n, n minus 1, n minus 2 upon factorial 3, 1 upon n cube. Now here n and n will cancel. So we can write this Sn as 2 plus 1 upon factorial 2. 1 minus 1 by n plus 1 upon factorial 3 1 minus 1 by n 1 minus 2 by n and then the sequence continues. Now the sequence it is an increasing function of n so this sequence is an 
increasing sequence and since this is 2 plus some positive value we can say that this s n it will always be greater than 2 now we need to prove that it is less than 3 now what we'll do is we'll write as n tends to infinite this 1 upon factorial 2 it will be less than or equal to 1 by 2 this 1 upon factorial 3 it will be less than 1 upon 2 square next one will be less than 1 upon 2 cube so from this we can write this sn will be less than 2 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 square plus 1 by 2 cube up to infinite this is nothing but an infinite gp we can write this as 2 plus a upon 1 minus r which is 3 so from these two conditions we can say that the sequence is bounded and its value will lie between 2 and 3. So the sequence is monotone increasing and it is bounded. That means the sequence, it is a convergent sequence and the limit of the sequence will lie between 2 and 3. We can find the limit of the sequence also. We can write this limit as limit n tends to infinite s n and it will be this limit n tends to infinite 1 plus 1 by n to the power n. Now we can write this as limit n tends to infinite e to the power log 1 plus 1 by n to the power n which we can write as e to the power this limit n tends to infinite log 1 plus 1 by n upon 1 by n. Now this is standard limit log 1 plus x upon x which is 1. So the limit point of the sequence is e whose value is 2.7 something which lies between 2 and 3. Now here the question is show that the sequence sn defined by s1 equals 1 and sn plus 1 equals 4 plus 3 sn upon 3 plus 2 sn is convergent and find its limit. Now what we'll do is we will write this s n plus 1 as 1 by 2 and then 6 s n plus 8 upon 3 plus 2 s n. Now what we will do is we will add 9 and subtract 9. We can write s n plus 1 as 1 by 2. Now here we will take this 3 common. So it will be 3 and then minus 1 upon 3 plus 2 s n. So this s n plus 1 will be 3 by 2 minus 1 by 2 into 3 plus 2 s n. Now any term in the sequence it is greater than 0. So we can write s n plus 1 will be greater than 0 and will be less than 3 by 2. So this sequence, it is a bounded sequence. Now using induction, we will prove that this sequence is monotonic increasing sequence. Now if we write S1, S1 is 1 and S2 will be 4 plus 3 upon 3 plus 2 which is 7 by 5. Here our assertion is Pn is Sn plus 1 will be greater than s n. Now we we'll let p k be true. That means s k plus 1 it will be greater than s k. Now we will multiply it with 2 and we will add 3. We can write 2 s k plus 1 plus 3 will be greater than 2sk plus 3. Now we will take the reciprocal and we will multiply it with minus 1 by 2. So we can write minus 1 by 2 2sk plus 1 plus 3 it will be greater than minus 1 by 2 2sk plus 3 and then we will also add 
3 by 2 both sides. Now this is nothing but this is SK plus 2 and this one here is SK plus 1. So from here we can say that P K plus 1 is true. So from mathematical induction we can say that this sequence is monotonic increasing sequence. Now since the sequence is bounded and it is monotone increasing, it is a convergent sequence. Now we need to find limit of the sequence. Now let the limit of the sequence be L. So we can write L equals 4 plus 3L upon 3 plus 2L. So we'll get 2L square equals 4 then the value of L is simply root 2. So limit of the sequence will be root 2. Now here the question is prove that the sequence whose nth term is a n equals under root of n plus 1 minus under root n it is monotonic it is bounded and it is convergent. Now we can write this a n as 1 upon under root of n plus 1 plus under root n. Now this value will be less than 1 upon 2 root n which is less than 1 by 2. So from here we can say this a n it will lie between 0 and 1 by 2 that is the sequence is a bounded sequence. So the sequence is a bounded sequence. Now we need to prove that sequence is monotonic. Now we know that under root of n plus under root of n plus 1 will be less than under root of n plus 1 plus under root of n plus 2. Now we take the reciprocal we can write 1 upon under root n plus under root n plus 1 will be greater than 1 upon under root of n plus 1 plus under root of n plus 2 that is a n it is greater than a n plus 1 that means this sequence is monotonic decreasing sequence. So this sequence is monotonic. Now monotone convergent sequence says if the sequence is bounded and monotonic then the sequence is a convergent sequence. So we can say that the sequence it converges limit of the sequence is limit n tends to infinite a n which is this limit n tends to infinite 1 upon under root of n plus 1 plus under root n which is 0. So this sequence it converges to 0. Now here the question is, let a n be a sequence defined as a1 equals 3 by 2 and a n plus 1 equals 2 minus 1 upon a n. Now from here we can write a2 equals 2 minus 1 upon a n which is 2 by 3. So it will be simply 4 by 3. Now we will prove two results. First we will prove that the sequence is bounded below. That is a n it is greater than 1. So this is our assertion p n. Now we will prove this result for n equals 1. We will get a 1. a 1 is 3 by 2 which is greater than 1 that means p1 is true. Now second step is let pk be true. It means ak it will be greater than 1. If ak is greater than 1, 1 upon ak will be less than 1 and minus 1 upon ak it will be greater than minus 1. Now we will add 2 to it. Now this is nothing but this is a k plus 1. So from here we can say 
a k plus one will be greater than one. So this sequence is bounded below, and a n is greater than one. Now the second part we'll prove that this sequence is monotonic, decreasing sequence. That is a n plus one will be less than a n. Now here this is our p n. Now for n equals one, we'll get a two and a two is four by three, which is less than three by two, and that is a one. So that means p one is true. Now second step, let p k be true. Now if p k is true, it means A k plus one will be less than A k. Now we take a reciprocal. We can write one upon A k plus one will be greater than one upon A k. Now we multiply with the minus sign and then add two. We can write two minus one upon A k plus one will be less than two minus one upon A k. This is nothing but this is A k plus two, and it is less than. A k plus one. That means p k plus one is true. So from mathematical induction, we can say that the sequence is monotone decreasing sequence. So the sequence is bounded below, and it is monotone decreasing. Then we can say that the sequence it is a convergent sequence. Now we need to find limit of convergence. Now suppose the limit is L, we can write L equals two minus one by L. Now this is L square minus two L plus one equals zero. That is the value of L is one. So this sequence converges and it converges to one. Now here the question is, if S n is a sequence such that S n plus one equals under root a b square plus S n square upon a plus one, where b is greater than a. And s1 equals a greater than zero. Then show that the sequence is an increasing bounded above sequence, and this limit n tends to infinite. S n is equal to one. Now we are given that s1 is equal to a, and it is greater than zero. Now if we put the value of s1, we'll get s2. Any term in the sequence, it will be simply greater than zero. Now we square this one. We can write s n plus one square will be a b square plus S n square upon a plus one, and if we write S n plus one square minus S n square, it will be simply a b square plus S n square minus a S n square minus S n square upon a plus one. Now this S n square will cancel. We can write this as a into b square minus S n square upon A plus one. Now a is a positive number, so from here we can write this expression will be less than b square minus s n square. Now we compare these two, we can write s n plus one square. It will be less than b square. That is, the sequence is bounded above. So any term of the sequence, it will be greater than zero but less than b. Now, since s n plus one is less than b, that means b square minus s n square will be positive. So from here we can say s n plus one square minus s n square it will be greater than or equal to zero. That is, s n plus one it will be greater than or equal to s n. That is, the sequence is an increasing sequence. So we have proved that the sequence is bounded and the sequence is an increasing sequence. Now, if the sequence is bounded and it is increasing, then the sequence is convergent. Now, we need to find limit of the sequence. So, we take this limit n tends to infinite, and suppose the sequence converges to this limit l, we can write l equals under root a b square plus l square upon a plus one. Now, we square it, we'll get a plus one l square. And it will be a b square plus l square 
Now from here we can write value of L is B. So the limit point of the sequence is simply B and that is the answer to this question. Now here the question is show that the sequence Sn where Sn is 1 upon n plus 1 plus 1 upon n plus 2 up to 1 upon n plus n is a convergent sequence. Now what we'll do is we'll write Sn plus 1 minus Sn. Now Sn plus 1 will be 1 upon n plus 2 plus 1 upon n plus 3 and I'll go all the way up to 1 upon 2n plus 2 and then minus 1 upon n plus 1 plus 1 upon n plus 2 up to 1 upon 2n. Now these terms they'll cancel. So we'll get Sn plus 1 minus Sn as 1 upon 2n plus 1 plus 1 upon 2n plus 2 minus 1 upon n plus 1. Now we can write this as 1 upon 2n plus 1 minus 1 upon 2n plus 2. So it will be 1 upon 2n plus 1 into 2n plus 2 which is greater than 0. So from here we can say Sn plus 1 will be greater than Sn that is this sequence is an increasing sequence. So this sequence is monotone increasing. Now we need to prove that the sequence is bounded. Now we know that Sn will be greater than 0 and this Sn which is 1 upon n plus 1 plus 1 upon n plus 2 plus 1 upon n plus n will be less than 1 by n plus 1 by n plus 1 by n that is n times that means this Sn will be greater than 0 but less than 1. Now since the sequence is monotone increasing and bounded we can say that this sequence it is a convergent sequence. Now we have to find limit point of the sequence we can write the sequence as limit n tends to infinite Sn and it will be this limit n tends to infinite this summation 1 upon n plus r which we can write as limit n tends to infinite this summation r varies from 1 to n 1 by n 1 plus r by n so we can write this as this integral dx upon 1 plus x when x varies from 0 to 1 it will be nothing but log 1 plus x from 0 to 1 so this value will be simply log 2. Now here the question is show that the sequence Sn where Sn is 1 upon factorial 1 plus 1 upon factorial 2 up to 1 upon factorial n is convergent. Now what we will do is we will find Sn plus 1 minus Sn will be 1 upon factorial 1 plus 1 upon factorial 2 up to 1 upon factorial n plus 1 minus 1 upon factorial 1 plus 1 upon factorial 2 up to 1 upon factorial n. Now this value will be simply 1 upon factorial n plus 1 which is greater than 0. So from here we can say Sn plus 1 will be greater than Sn that is the sequence is an increasing sequence. Now we'll prove that the sequence is a bounded sequence. So this Sn will be greater than 0 and it is 1 upon factorial 1 plus 1 upon factorial 2 plus 1 upon factorial 3 up to 1 upon factorial n. Now this is less than or equal to 1. This is less than or equal to 1 by 2. It is less than or equal to 1 upon 2 square and it is less than or equal to 1 upon 2 to the power of n minus 1. Now we take this limit n tends to infinite. Limit n tends to infinite we can write this Sn will be less than 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 square up to infinite which is nothing but an infinite GP. So this Sn will be less than A upon 1 minus R that is this value of Sn will lie between 0 and 2. So the sequence it is monotonic increasing and it is bounded 
that means the sequence is a convergent sequence now we need to find limit of this sequence now we take this limit n tends to infinite so this limit n tends to infinite sn will be 1 upon factorial 1 plus 1 upon factorial 2 plus 1 upon factorial 3 up to infinite now if we add 1 and subtract 1 now this is nothing but this is expansion of e so limit of the sequence will be simply e minus 1 now here the question is let vn be a sequence defined by v1 equals 1 and vn plus 1 equals vn square plus 1 by 5 to the power n whole root then we need to find limit n tends to infinite vn now we can write this expression as vn plus 1 square minus vn square and it will be equal to 1 by 5 to the power n and will be greater than 0 from here we can write vn plus 1 will be greater than vn that is the sequence is monotonic increasing sequence now we can write v2 square minus v1 square will be 1 by 5 v3 square minus v2 square is 1 upon 5 square and then vn square vn minus 1 square will be 1 upon 5 to the power n minus 1 now we'll add everything we can write vn square minus v1 square which is 1 and it will be 1 by 5 plus 1 by 5 square up to 1 upon 5 to the power n minus 1 that is vn square is 1 plus 1 by 5 up to 1 upon 5 to the power n minus 1 now this is nothing but a gp whose sum is a into 1 minus r to the power n upon 1 minus r which is 1 minus 1 by 5. Now we take this limit n tends to infinite. This value will be 0. So this value will be simply 5 by 4. So limit n tends to infinite. vn square is 5 by 4 then this limit n tends to infinite vn will be simply under root 5 by 4 and that's your option b now here the question is two sequences xn and yn they are defined inductively by x1 equals 1 by 2 and y1 equals 1 where xn is under root of xn minus 1 into yn minus 1 and 1 upon yn equals 1 by 2 1 upon xn plus 1 upon yn minus 1 now we need to prove that xn minus 1 will be less than xn which is less than yn and it will be less than yn minus 1 and we have to deduce that both the sequences converge to the same limit l where the value of l it lies between 1 by 2 and 1. Now what we'll do is in the first part we'll prove that xn is less than yn using principle of mathematical induction. Now we'll prove it for n equals 1. For n equals 1 x1 is 1 by 2 and y1 is 1 that is x1 is less than y1 that means p1 is true now we'll assume let pk be true which simply means xk will be less than yk now using this relation we can write xk plus 1 it is equal to under root of xk into yk that is xk plus 1 is geometric mean between xk and yk that means xk plus 1 it will lie between 
x k n y k now from this one we can write 1 upon y k plus 1 equals 1 by 2 1 upon x k plus 1 plus 1 upon y k that is y k plus 1 it is harmonic mean between x k plus 1 and y k that is y k plus 1 will lie between x k plus 1 and y k so we can write x k is less than x k plus 1 it will be less than y k plus 1 and it will be less than y k now from this we can say p k plus 1 is true that means from mathematical induction we can say that x n will be less than y n and if we use this entire result we can simply write x n will be less than x n plus 1 will be less than y n plus 1 and it will be less than y n or in other words we can write x n minus 1 will be less than x n which is less than y n which is less than y n minus 1 and this is what we need to prove now from this result we can write x1 is less than x2 is less than x3 and it is less than x n minus 1 and it will be less than x n which is less than y n less than y n minus 1 less than y n minus 2 and less than y 1 now the value of x1 is 1 by 2 and value of y1 is 1 so both the sequences xn and yn they are bounded sequence the sequence x it is bounded and it is monotonic increasing whereas the sequence yn it is bounded and it is monotonic decreasing sequence now both the sequences xn and yn they are bounded and they are monotonic thus both the sequences they will converge suppose sequence xn it converges to l1 and sequence yn it converges to l2 and from here we can write l1 equals under root l1 into l2 and from here we can write 1 upon l2 equals 1 by 2 1 upon l1 plus 1 upon l2 now from here we can write l1 equals l2 so both the sequences they will converge to the same limit say l and since we have already proved that both the sequences they are bounded between 1 by 2 and 1 the limiting value of these sequences it will lie between 1 by 2 and 1 and that is the answer to this question